Good day, grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson. Sorry, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to continue with our statistics. Um, I don't think we've done statistics this year yet. So let's just talk about data and collecting data. I think we did a little bit earlier in the year about mean averages and things. So let's just go through to make sure you guys understand every single thing. So first of all, we're now going to be talking about data and about central tendencies and means, etc., etc., of data. So we're going to be reminding you about everything you should already know about statistics, and then we're going to take you a little bit further into what you should know for this year. So data refers to the pieces of information that are observed and recorded from an experiment or a survey. So data could be anything from a specific number, such as um, for example, if I say to you, how many ice creams do you eat per week? So you'd give me a number versus if I had to ask a whole bunch of different people what their favorite color would be, then they could tell me anything from purple to blue to violet, to indigo, whatever. OK, so you get two different types of data. You get quantitative data and qualitative data. Quantitative data is data or our data. The reason this verb is R is because data is actually the plural the plural, a single piece of data is actually called datum, but nobody uses that these days. But that's why we use the plural verb for the data. So quantitative data are data that can be written as numbers. Like I said, if I said to you, how many times a month do you go watch movies? Or how many um, meals, how many pizzas have you eaten this year? Okay, those things are quantitative data. Qualitative data can't be written as a number. So it is more giving you an idea of something. So it would be, for example, your favorite cool drink, the color of your cell phone, the language you speak at home, um, like I said, your eye color, your hair color, anything to do with not numbers. That is called qualitative data. OK, so there are two types of data. Now, when we talk about most of the data from now on, we're going to be talking about quantitative data. When we look at the measures of central tendency, um, you'll find that most of these measures of central tendency can only be used with quantitative data. I will talk to you about qualitative data as we go, OK? So the mean, which is also the same thing as the average or arithmetic mean is basically the sum of all the values divided by the number of the values. So if I said to you what is the average of these numbers, you could easily do it, right? You just add them up and divide by however many numbers they are. That is the same thing as the mean, but it's also called the arithmetic mean. So you need to know what that means. Sorry, by the way, it's called measures of central tendency because what you'll see is as we go through, we're going to go through different ways to find out the middle number, okay? So there's mean, there's median, there's mode, and then we'll talk outliers, etc. So the three specific ones we're going to be talking about are mean, median, and mode. And they actually have got different uses, which is why we talk about them. Okay, so the mean is a sum of set of values divided as average. So let's just show you how you would get your mean here. Since there is only, let's just quickly see how many numbers there are. There are one, two, three, four, five. There are only five numbers. So I'm just going to do it on my calculator. I'm going to go 12 plus 25 plus 36 plus 42 plus 50 equals and then I'm going to divide it by 5 and you'll see it my mean my average is 33 so the mean for this the mean for this is 33 okay the median is the value the median of data set is the value of the central position when the data says it has been arranged from the lowest to the highest. In other words, this would be the same as if you got all your classmates to stand in a row from shortest to tallest and then you chose the middle height, okay, the person with the, so you counted forward and counted back and you got to the one in the middle, that would be the middle height, okay. 
So there are two different ways to handle medians and it depends on whether you've got odd numbers of values or even numbers of values. So the odd number, it's really easy. First of all, what we have to do is we have to arrange it from the smallest number to the biggest number. So let's do that. You can see this is 11, 15 looks good, 63 looks good, but then it's 3 and 46. So this is not in the order it should be. It needs to be from the smallest to the biggest. So let's rearrange it. It's going to be 3, 11, 15, 46, and then 63. And then to always check how many that you've got all of them, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There you go. So we've definitely got all five. Now the middle value is going to be median. So that's nice and easy. Okay. In other words, we have got five numbers. 1, 2, 3, three, four, five. So do you agree this third number, if we count from the left, it's one, two. If we count from the right, it's one, two. So this year, as far as we're concerned, is the median is going to be 15. Okay. Now, let's look at the median of an even number of values. Okay. And this one has been arranged in numerical order. Let's check. 1, 2, 10, 11, 14, 68, 86, and 99. How nice of them to organize it in the order we want it. 1, 2, okay. Now let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so there are eight numbers. So if that's the case, do you agree we can't just count one, two, and then the middle one and one, two? Because of the fact that there are eight. So what we do is we count the middle two, okay? We count the middle two, and we find the average of the middle two. Okay, so it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So the median, we are going to add 11 and 14 and divide it by 2. So it's going to be in the middle of these two numbers. So the median in this case is going to be 11 plus 14 divided by 2, which is 25 divided by 2, which is 12 and a half. There you go. So the median in this case is 12 and a half. Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, now the mode. Now the mode is basically the number that appears most often. So we would use the mode, especially for qualitative data. So for example, if we wanted to know what the measure of central tendency was for um, the color of eyes in, I don't know, grade 10 in, I don't know, Utenate Girls High School, then what we would do is we would go through all the data on the survey and we would list it as in blue, green, and brown. I know there are lots of other interesting colors, but basically we go for blue, green, and brown. And the one that happens the most often is the mode. Okay, the one that happens the most often is the mode. So the mode of the data set is the value that occurs most often in the set. And the mode can also be described as the most frequent or most common value. So let's find the mode over here. So let's go to purple. So we got, and they've already arranged it for us nicely in um, numerical order from smallest to biggest. It's always nice to have it in numerical order from smallest to biggest, just because it makes it easy to see all the numbers, okay? So do you agree that we've got two threes? Yeah, we've got three fives, one six, one seven, and two eights. So do you agree our mode is obviously five in this example? Guys, you can have what are called bimodal groups, bimodal. Bimodal means that you've got two sets of the, part of the data, two, two parts of the data that have the same number of appearances. So for example, if I had a set of data that went one, 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 two, three, four, four, four. Do you agree that one appears three times and four appears three times? Therefore, this would be a bimodal, bimodal set of data and there would be one and four. 
Okay, obviously you can get trimodal, etc. But you guys don't have to worry about that right now. Right, so now let's talk about outliers. Because outliers actually make quite a bit of a difference to the whole readings, okay? In other words, okay, and this probably will really hit home to you guys. Let's say, for example, um, you all write a maths test, okay? You all write the maths test, and let's say there are 20 students in the maths class, okay? And let's say the test was really, really hard, and there was some work that hadn't been explained to you properly and everything else, okay? And most, let's say, all the students, 19 out of the students, 20 students, 19 out of 20 students get 60%, okay? But one student happens to have learned that work before, and that student gets 100%, okay? So 19 of you get 60%, and one student gets 100%, okay? That student will be called an outlier, okay? And they have a huge effect on the mean and the median, which is basically your averages, okay? So you need to make sure that your data is correctly classified, okay? So an outlier is a value in the data set that is not typical of the rest of the set. Is it usually a value that is much greater or much less than all the other values in the data set? Similarly, if you have someone who's been sick and they just come on the day of the test and they've never seen that work before and they get 2%, that's obviously also going to affect your average, okay? So let's have a look at this example. It says, the heights of 10 learners are measured in centimeters to obtain the following data set. Okay, so there's your data set. It says afterwards, we include one more learner in the group who is a bit taller at 179 centimeters. Compare the mean and median of the heights of the learners before and after the learner must inclu was included. Okay, so the first thing I do just to make life easier for myself is I'm going to rearrange this data set in numeric order from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to start at 146. Okay, then I'm going to just tick it to make it easy for myself. Then I've got two 150s, 150 and 150. Then I've got a 153. I've got a 155. A 156. Um, a two 157s, 157, 157, a 163, and a 168. Okay, so let's just check it. Um, we're supposed to have 10, one, what is that, 150? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent, that's ten. And then obviously we've got this extra one of 179 that we're going to add afterwards. So now what we need to do is work out the mean and then we're going to have to work out the median. Okay, well the median is the easier of the two, so let's work that out first. We're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's obviously halfway between 155 and 156. So the median in this case is going to be 155,5. Okay, let's find the mean. We're going to have to add these and divide by 10. So let's do that. So let's clear. And we've got 146 plus 150. Mm, not times, delete, plus 150, plus 153, plus 155, plus 156, plus 157, mm -mm. 6, plus 157, 
plus 168. So that equals 1555. Okay, so that equals 1555. And now we're going to divide that by 10. So that's obviously going to be 155,5. So interestingly, the mean and median are the same. Okay, now we're going to include this number here. Yeah? And we're going to work out the mean and we're going to work out the median again. I don't know why that disappeared. Median. <sighs> okay. So the median in this case, now you've got 11 numbers. So it goes up to this number here is a middle number. So therefore the median is 156. The median did change and it shifted up because of that 179 being up. Now let's look at the mean. We've got the 155, but now we have to add the number 179. So we're going to add 179, and that's going to be 1734, 1734. But now we have to divide it by 11 because there are now 11 numbers in the set. So we're going to divide by 11. And it becomes 157.64, 157,64. So you can see that the difference that the, um, the outlier makes, not only has it obviously shifted the mean and the median up, but do you see that over here when the data is kind of close together and there's no these weird outliers that are very big or very small, the median and med mean come up to the same value. Whereas yeah, do you see that the mean and median are actually different with the mean being slightly higher? Okay, so obviously an outlier has an effect on the um, average of the different types of averages. Now we're going to talk about grouping data because so far we've just spoken about finding the um, the measures of central tendency of just normal data, okay? But now, if we've got thousands and thousands and thousands of readings, we need to find a way to handle large amounts of data. So to sub we can subdivide it into sub-ranges, okay? So the grouping is done by choosing a set of ranges and then counting how many of the data po points fall into each range. These sub-ranges obviously can't overlap because then you'll end up counting in both points, okay? So in other words, if you're doing kids, age of, uh, if you're doing the number of kids um, in each age group from, in a, in a, I don't know, youth club, from say one to 10 and then from 10 to 20, that's not gonna work. Why is it gonna work? Because you're gonna have kids that are 10 years old in this group and kids that are 10 years old in that group as well. So that means you're going to double count the 10 years old kids, okay? So it must not overlap. And it also must cover the entire range of the data set. You can't just leave out part of the ages because you don't feel like counting them, okay? You have to include them all. Okay, so for example, We've got a height of 30 trees and it's in centimeters and they were measured, okay? So here is the height of 30 trees, not in any particular order, okay? Now, in order for us to group the data, what we're going to do is we look for what's the smallest number. So we see we've got 132 there. There's 132, 139, 133. So nothing smaller than 130. So I'm going to make the height from 130. Then if you look, the biggest one is 170, 179, 178. Nothing bigger than 179. So I'm going to make my last group 180. Then what's ideal is to try and work out how we can get nice groups in between them, but you can see that we're going to go up in tens. So what you'll notice here is it does not, it's basically we would read this as H is smaller than 140 and greater than and equal to 130. So 140 is not included in that tally, okay, but it is included in this tally. So now we're going to use this table, which you guys must learn to, to draw, where you write down your ranges, you write down the tally, and I'll talk to you about that in a second, and then you write down your count. Your tally is how often you come across a number that is within that range. 
And although a lot of my students cross them out, I do always suggest you don't cross it out in case you made a mistake and you can't read what you crossed out. Rather tick, okay? So for example, the first one is 132, so we got one, okay? 145 is over here, and yes, I'm gonna quickly do all of them. 164 is over here, 178 is over here, 179 is still over here. 135 is over here, 144, 153, 139, 142. To get the point, I just want to see if, okay, no, we do need to do it because we need to be able to plot the graph. Okay, so let's carry on. So then it's 161, 141, I was hoping they gave us the numbers, 170, 156, 155, 169, 138, 142. And I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, I ticked through it. I don't know if you've seen it before, but when you're counting and you count in fives, your fifth line goes through it. Okay, so you finish that five and you're moving on. It just makes it easier to add up as you go through, okay? So this 142, 140, 139, 132, and 169. Sounds very easy to add up because it's 5 and 3 is 8. 5 and 2 is 10. 5, 5 and 3 is 8. And that's just 3. Do you agree that that's so much easier to count than to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? And you have to sit there and try and work it out. Whereas, yeah, you can go, oh, 5. Why is it 10? That's supposed to be 7. 5, 6, 7. It's supposed to be a 7, not a 10. Okay, but do you understand what I'm saying? It's much easier to do it this way than to try and add them up if you just keep going. Okay, so there we go. We've got our numbers. Now we need to draw our histogram. Now, what is the difference between a histogram and a bar graph? Well, a bar graph doesn't touch each other. They don't touch each other, whereas a histogram does. And the reason for that is that a histogram compares like with like, okay? Whereas a bar graph can compare different things. So, um, in other words, with the histogram, we are looking at, in this case, the heights of trees. Heights of trees, okay. And that's it, just looking at heights of trees, okay. Now, our ranges are 130 to 140, uh, is eight. So now we need to, oh, sorry, hang on a minute. Whoopsie, I should probably make this easier for you to read. So the heights of the trees are going to be what? It's going to be, and you can start at zero. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with that, but let's do instead. Oh no, we need it from this way. So we're going to go zero. No, we need 130. 130, um, 140, 150. 160, 170, that's a 70, um, and 180. Obviously, you guys will use rulers, and then we want up to eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we are still calling this the, this would be the height of trees, and this would be the number of trees. Okay, so let's draw this in. First of all, we've got eight. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight to 140. So it's eight to 140. Then 140 to 157. Seven 
2, 1, 50. Then it's 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 to the next one, which is 160. Then from 160 to 170 is 8 again. So that's 8. And then there are only 3, 1, 2, 3. From 170 to 180. So do you see that we can actually look at this and very quickly and easily recognize some stuff? So for example, we can see that the two modal groups, okay, there's this one and this one, because they both have the same value, which makes life much easier to understand. Okay, now let's talk about the measures of central tendencies for group data. So Calculating the measures of central tendency of group data does not mean we do not have the same accuracy as before. Sorry, it does mean we don't have the same accuracy. Obviously, I mean, if I had to think about this way, if I had to say to you, okay, fine, we're going to um, look at the following numbers, which range from 1 to 20, okay? So let's go that we've got 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, five, six, seven, oh, let's go one to ten, eight, nine, 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 ten. Okay, so do you agree that to find the mean, median, and mode is going to be the most accurate because the mean is going to be the mean of all these numbers. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You're going to add these thirteen numbers up and divide by thirteen and you'll find the mean. Okay, cool. But now what happens if I put it in group data? Okay, and I said to you we've got it's up to 10. So I'm going to say we've got uh, 1, 2, um, hang on, let's do it like this, it's up to 10. So it's the first two. So it's 1 to 2, um, 3 to 4, 5 to 6, 7 to 8, and 9 to 10. Do you agree we've got 1 to 2 is 1? Yeah, we've got 1, 2, Two, three, four, five is one, two, six is sorry, five is six, one, seven and eight, and then one, two, three, four. So do you see that that there gives us two modal groups, okay? Which is totally different from the average that we could be getting if we added this up, okay? So calculating the with the measures of central tendency of group data does mean we don't have the same accuracy. It's going to be slightly smaller, okay? But it does make life a lot easier when we are actually trying to solve the problem. It's very useful, especially if we've got multiple modes like I just showed you. Um, don't worry about the video, sorry. Or if the starter sample size is very large. So let's consider the following group data and calculate the mean, the modal group and the median group, okay? Now, we know what a mode is. A mode is the, the data point that are, has is most often found, and the median is the number that's in the middle, right? So obviously, then the modal group is going to be the one with the biggest, highest frequency, and the median group is going to be the one that's in the middle. Again, we'll talk about how we're going to find that out. So here's our chart. We've got mass from 50 to 59. And you can see they're very nice. It did in, didn't include the, the things so that you would end, end up with a double. So in other words, this is smaller than 59, and this includes 60 to 69. You know what? These actually have to have equal signs here. Otherwise, it doesn't include these numbers. Okay, so that was a mistake. And you can see the frequency here. Right, now, the first thing we need to do is find the midpoint of each range. So what we do is we take 50 plus 59 and divide by 2, and we get 55. So 55 is the midpoint on 50 to 59. 60 to 69, the midpoint is 65. Ditto for 79 and 89 and 99. So that's the midpoint. Then we've got the frequency, okay? The frequency comes from the frequency that we said with the number of data points, people getting data points within this mass category, okay? So that's your frequency. So in other words, within the 50 to 59 kilogram group, 
there are the midpoint is 55 and there are four people that got um, between 50 and 59 okay there are 62 people got between 60 and 69 the midpoint is 65 okay do you understand how to read this now we're going to find the mean and the mean is different okay not terribly different but a little bit different again okay, i'll show you how we're going to get it okay so first let's just get the color so what do we know we choose the midpoint of this because obviously we're going to try and make this a little bit easier for us to understand or to do so instead of counting all these numbers we find the midpoint okay counting all the numbers between them and dividing by the numbers we find the midpoint the midpoint between 50 and 59 is 50 Five, okay. The midpoint between 60 and 69 is 65. The midpoint between 70 and 79 is 75. Get it? Now we have the frequencies. The frequency is the number of people found in that age or the number of people that signed a piece of paper, etc. in this case. Okay, so we've got the frequency and its different distribution groups, okay? And totals 180 people. So we've got 180 people that totally um, took part in the survey. Okay, so now to find the mean of this data, we do this. We go 4 times 55 plus 62 times 65 plus 81 times 75 plus 31 times 85 plus 2 times 95 that there would be the number of individuals there were and then we divide by 180 the total total number and you get 73.06 so that there is the mean of the groups of data okay that's the mean now let's talk modal class. Modal class is one of the easiest ones to do because all you're doing is looking for the one that's got the highest frequency. Um, an easy way to do it is, sorry, we're doing median. What happened to modal? Okay, the modal class. So the modal class is the one that happens most often. So you can see that this is 81. So therefore this year, the midpoint is 75. So the modal class would be 70 to 79. And the value would be 75. Okay, that's all it is, the midpoint. Let's talk median. The median, what you do is you find the position, okay, of the midpoint, of the median. So, in other words, remember when we had a whole bunch of numbers? So, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. So, we had six numbers. Okay, and remember we arranged them in numerical order from smallest to biggest, like this is. And then we wanted to find the middle point. Okay, so if you've got these numbers, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, it's even numbers. What do we do? We take these two numbers and we add them and divide them. Okay, but there is another way to do it. And the other way to do it is go, okay, fine, well, hang on. We've got six numbers here, right? What we're going to do is we're going to add one. Okay, and then we're going to divide it by two. To get the median in other words we're going to move it up and divide by two okay so in other words your median here would be let's think about it it is the median is equal to 90.5 so 90.5 is a position okay so now let's think about this do you agree that this is four this would be a total of 68, so up to here 68. And yeah, if we add 81, we get a 9 and 140. So this year in this group is the median. The median is found in that group. Okay, do you understand that? And then, so the median group is going to be from 70 to 79. And obviously the median itself is the midpoint of that group, which is 75. Okay, and how did they do it? They took the total frequency, added one and divided by two. Right, so now let's talk about measures of distortion. We've, dispersion. We've spoken about the measures of central tendency. In other words, we're finding out the averages. Now we're going to talk about how the data is spread out. Okay, so the range of data is set 
a data set is said to be the difference between the minimum value and the maximum value. That is the range. So if you look over here, you've got a whole bunch of numbers. 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, 4, 5, 6, 9. Okay, so they range from 1 up to, if you look carefully, you can see it ranges up to 11. But the, what you will do always when you're asking to find your dispersion um, numbers, your measures of dispersion, is you will always, always, always rearrange these in numerical order from smallest to biggest. In fact, whenever you get data, I don't care what the situation is, just do it. Rearrange it from smallest to biggest, okay, from smallest to biggest, and then you will see that it's so much easier when you have to solve all the problems. So let's do that quickly. So if we do that, we've got one, three, there we go, one, three, then we've got a four, we got two fives. Okay, we've got a six. We've got a seven. We've got an eight. We've got a nine and a nine. And we've got 11. So do you agree that the minimum number here is one and the maximum is 11? So the range is going to be the difference between that. So the range, the range is going to be 11 minus one, which is 10. 11 minus one, which is 10. Now let's talk quartiles. Quartiles divide the data into quarters. Makes sense, quarter, quartiles, okay? Why do we wanna do that? Because people often like to gather information about the top 25% or the bottom 25% or the middle, okay? And also because, or well, the middle 50%. Later on, when you get into more complicated, slightly more complicated statistics, you'll learn about um, different types of graphs and those graphs are based on percentiles. So you'll talk about like the 95th percentile or whatever. And that is all based on this type of graph thing going on here and the quarters, okay? So we've got, so if we look at our numbers, we've got two, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Isn't it nice that they've already arranged it for us in, um, a numerical order from smallest to biggest. Okay, so the first thing we do is we count the number of numbers we have. So I just want to see what color pen I've got. Okay, so we count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so then the next thing we do is we find the median, which is the middle number. It's also called Q2 because if you think about it, quarters are one through to four. So if you've got your first quartile, Q1, your Q2 is going to be your middle, middle, your median, okay? And then you've got Q3, um, and then obviously you've got more data, yeah, because it's divided into four. That was a terrible drawing. Let's try again. Yeah, as your data, this is the minimum this is the maximum, okay? And then in the middle will be Q2, halfway between here will be Q1, and halfway between here will be Q3, okay? Normally, that's just normally, if the data was evenly spread. Okay, so the quartile two, which is a median, which is the middle number, is obviously gonna be number six, the sixth number in our set of 11 numbers, which happens to be five. Okay, easy peasy. Now, this is, now we want the midpoint of the lower half. Now, the midpoint of the lower half is your Q1. Okay, so the low, midpoint of the middle one, if you look at this, so now we're looking at this lot of data here. Okay, do you see we're looking at that part of data? If we're looking at that lot of data, which is the middle point? Well, it's obviously this point here is the middle point. So therefore, that is Q1, your lower quartile Q1, which is 3. Now, we want to look at the upper. So we're going to look at the upper lot. And what's the midpoint? The midpoint is halfway between everything, which is going to be Q3, which is 7. Okay, 1, 2, 1, 2, 7 in the middle. Okay, so there you go. You've got now Q1, Q2, and Q3.
So now let's look at this data and let's first see if they did it in numerical order for us. We've got 20, 32, 43, 54, 55, 61, 70. Yes, they did it in numerical order. How nice of them. Next we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, no worries, we can do this. So we know if we've got 12 numbers, then the middle two we have to average to find our Q2, our median. So these two are our middle two. Okay, do you agree? We've got five numbers here, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five numbers here. So these are our two. So we say 61 plus 73 divided by 2 is going to be our Q2. So 3 and 1 is 4, and 6 and 7 is 13 over 2, which is going to be 67, because that's a 6, remainder 1, so that's 67. So Q2, our median, that's our median, is 67. So it's over there. There is our median at 67. Now we need to change color. And now we need to look at this lot of numbers, okay, which again is an even number lot of numbers. So again, we're going to look at these two numbers because these are the two numbers in the middle. So it's going to be 43 plus 54 divided by 2 which is going to be 3 and 4 is 7, and 5 and 4 is 9 over 2. So 2 into 9 goes 4 times, remainder 1. 2 into 17 goes 8 times, remainder 5. So that's 48.5 is Q1. So that would be over here. So that's 48 comma 5. Finally, we need to look at the top lot of data, the top set. And again, we're going to use these two numbers, but it's 89 and 90, so that makes it very easy. The middle number is going to be 89 and a half, or 89,5, should I say, and that would be our Q3. So there we go, we've got Q2, Q1, and Q3. Not too bad here. Now let's talk about the intercortical range. Intercortical range is really easy. Once you've got Q3 and Q1, the intercortical range is the difference between them. So it's a better measure of dispersion than the range. And the reason for that is because of outliers, okay? Your outliers are going to mess up any type of um, dispersion range, okay? So, so it's better to use your quartile. So let's look at the first example, okay? So yeah, again, first things we're going to do is we're going to count the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so that makes it a bit easier. So Q2 is just going to be 5. Q1, is, we're looking now at this lot of data. We're looking for the middle point. That's 3. And Q3, we're looking at this lot of data there. So we're looking at this number there, which is 7. Okay. Now, if we look at the intercortical range, do you agree that it goes 7 minus 3, which is 4? Okay. So now let's do the five number summary. The five number summary is very easy now. It's minimum, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, maximum. Okay, so let's, and then of course you draw a box and whisker diagram using those values. So the way the, oopsie, so the way the box and whisker diagram looks, sorry, I thought I'd drawn one for you, but I'll have a look at it now. The box and whisker diagram would look like this. Well, actually, let's use the information we've got in the previous one. The minimum value is 2, okay? So the minimum value is 2. The maximum value is 9, okay? The maximum value, uh, okay, let's go through this. Lower quartile is, Q1 is 3. I'm actually just going to write this down, hang on. So we've got, I don't know why I did it like this, sorry. So it is going to be Q2 is 5, Q1 is 3, I just realized I've got out of time, Q3 is 7, okay, and the maximum is 9. Okay, so we've got lower quartile is going to be 3, 
Uh, median is five. Maximum upper quartile is seven and maximum value is nine. And you know what? We've run out of time. I've gone way over time. So I will continue with drawing the box and whisker diagrams and we will continue looking at our stats in our next lesson, which is on Wednesday. Have a wonderful day. Cheers. Bye.